Welcome everybody, it's Davey Craft on the Sound Channel. If you haven't yet subscribed, reach on down there below and hit that subscribe button. If you like the video, hit like. Um, we're getting a little later start today going out than we have in the past. So you can see we're well into the daylight hours, which is okay, because that way it's uh, less risk of hitting things that we can't see. But we're gonna go out and try doing a little uh, trolling fishing today, see how that goes for us. Maybe try and go after some steelhead. I think there's a couple places those are still open so we got the fishing guide book we're going to check it out and uh see what we can catch it's about 43 degrees out um probably at least a 15 mile an hour breeze going here from uh what the flags look like and um pretty close to high tide uh looks like we're on the outgoing tide right now so we'll get underway and uh get back here in a moment well as things go we have 193 hours on the motor done the 100 hour service haven't done the 200 hour service yet because it's not 200 hours and if you look at showing the engine temperature here is 113 degrees right as we've been setting a while we haven't made it very far from the train trestle at all haven't even got the boat up on plane yet and Let's switch back to engine info. Let's see, so you see the engine temperatures down plenty low. And if I fire this thing up, first we'll get the low voltage, and then we instantly get the engine over temp. So, today we are not gonna be going out steelhead fishing. Um, we're just going to make the best of it and clean the boat. <laughs> so, as you can see, as you can see, Brian's already got the gunnel on the, this side pretty much cleared out. Grab the trash bag, filling it back up. We got a lot of our little, uh, watertight storage containers to keep out here. Uh, this one we're running like a long-term test thing on this Z-Rust infused one. Um, to see if it does in fact keep the rust down in salt water use uh, we got our weight container this box actually came from harbor freight i'm sure there's others like it if i can find uh, a link i'll post it down below but we've linked it up by you know small to large across the way here right up to uh, the i think one pound and three pound we've got that's for getting stuff down for halibut or um no other deep deep water that fits very nicely up in here so yeah we're just gonna do a big old clean out and uh, you know maybe try fishing around some structure here and see if we can uh, figure out what makes a bird's nest that large if uh, you have any idea what makes a bird's nest that large um, post it down in the comments because we'd sure like to know uh, if one shows up we'll get some footage of it but for now, just gonna sit here, you know, try and not be frustrated about a day not fishing. The boat did need to be cleaned out anyway, so we'll get that all taken care of. And, you know, see if we can figure out what's going on with the engine here exactly. And uh, if I find the answer, I'll definitely post a video on that. As you can see, the Stabie Craft holds a lot of stuff. So we are giving it the thorough clean out since we're pretty much just, you know, stuck not going 30 miles out here. And uh, try and get it organized as best as possible, get a bunch of the old stuff we don't use out. Uh, the stuff we do use, make it easier to access. So, making pretty decent progress. Brian volunteered to climb up here. Um, we got the pads out for storage, but eventually I'd like to get those back in and have things organized where they fit under the pads. So continuing on with our organizing, I've been carrying around a bunch of um, tarp tie-down cords in case they were to, needed to rig up an emergency shelter. And uh, then some tarp clamps and paracord. Everything loose was taking up a lot more space than it does in one one gallon Ziploc bag, right? That is pretty much the same size that just the bungee cords alone were um, stowed in so we're definitely saving a lot of space getting rid of a lot of excess trash we don't need in here so on days when you can't fish organize 
Well, it's a little afternoon. We have had some chili, some coffee, and uh, cleaned and tidied and organized. You can see the gunnels now. We've got everything has its place. Uh, we've got a bag of trash, which is a lot of it was packaging, like boxes, things came in. We broke down and put in Ziplocs. So now they stay dry and take up less space. Um, you know, lots, lots more space to optimize, um, you know, fishing gear. Then in the interior, we have everything neatly boxed up, stowed underneath. We will be able to put the uh, pads back in here. And then our weekly stuff we bring out, like our packs will uh, stow nicely, but the things like, you know, emergency water and ponchos and extra bags of chips and such. And some of the cooking gear will have a place to stay. So we got the dash looking a lot nicer. So my uh, compliments to Brian for a lot of this, cause he, he sat up here and worked on a lot of this while I was in back cooking chili. And so we, uh, you know, Bo may be having problems, which we know it is, uh, cause we've been sitting here now for some time. The engine's basically at um, temperature. If you look, I just started up a minute ago showing 79 degrees Fahrenheit. So, engine's been off now for at least probably three hours. And the second I start it, engine over temp. So, get it on the uh, Lowrance. get it on the controls which unfortunately there's no way to silence that one um, but that's off of a dead stop you know setting in water for several hours so we're uh, gonna head back I'm gonna get some pictures of the serial number off the engine uh, go ahead and all order all the stuff I need for the 200 hour service anyway be time for oil uh, lower gear case or the lower unit oil change I'll just go ahead and yank that off and change the uh, impeller and after reading some stuff um, online I may order the impeller um, I don't think it was called a housing but uh, the piece the impeller sits in to pump the water somebody said they'd solved their problem tracked it back to that being or having one millimeter of clearance between the impeller blades and a part of the housing so if that's the case and given the first 200 hours of service i get some uh, beginner mistakes out of the way like uh, probably running some sand through there at times so may uh, just order that casing to have it on hand just in case if it's not outrageously expensive but either way we'll get to the bottom of it and hope to be back out here next week um you know actually fishing but for now it's kind of nice to have a clean boat you know everything's organized everything's in a place and um, yeah, it feels kind of good. So I think we're gonna cut the day short and head to Cabela's, which is one of our fishing uh, supply stores here in the US and uh, hunting and such. So maybe I'll grab some footage from inside of there for you folks over in Australia and New Zealand and other places that are watching. So now that we've pulled anchor, started up and we're just underway, you can see the engine temp right here is holding at 100 hasn't even came off the uh, indicator yet the beeping has dropped to intermittent once i got it in gear and got to moving a bit uh before i did that it just it flat out cut the engine it killed the engine on us so um which is annoying i absolutely hate electronic uh, gadgets that think they're smarter than me and saving me from something uh, when all it does is leave you stranded um so Anyway, we're going to try and idle it back to dock here since we're less than a mile away and uh, get it back on the pad and check some things once we get there. Looks like for the moment we're going to be waiting on a train to go through here unless we can get under the bridge, but we're right at high tide or a little past, so that's going to be iffy, but we'll find out. We have made it back to the dock. Um, the engine temperature gauge here is still showing, not even touching 150 yet from... Uh, Probably half idle, half actually running it kind of hard. And you can still hear in the background, the beeping is still running, you know, at a beep instead of a steady. 
uh, which at least let us get back. But yeah, so we are going to be off to Cabela's now and uh, hopefully have this fixed and time to go do some fishing next weekend. So we ended up going to Cabela's for a while. Didn't uh, do a whole lot more than walk around there and check out some stuff that we'll uh, be wanting to acquire for future days out. But um, once I got back, decided to come back over here, bring the uh, pads back so you can see the space up under here in the 2050. It's fairly sizable. I'm a little over six foot. I can lay down on here diagonally, at least very comfortably. And uh, with the folded down, then with everything up, makes it a really nice padded area to, to haul things, a little extra cushion for everything you're hauling around. So we managed to get everything we've stowed on here and needed, uh, or may need, right? To the point where it is safely contained and, um, you know, ready to go. But we have a lot of extra space. Um, so next up, I'm going to yank the lower unit off the engine here and take it home for its uh, 200,000 mile service. I'm going to go ahead and do the whole water pump and housing assembly, um, not just the impeller, just to make sure everything is good to go. Probably go ahead and change out the anodes, I don't know. If anybody knows on the anodes, do they need to be replaced when they're worn out or is it better just to replace them routinely? If you got an answer, uh, please comment below because I'd like to know. Um, so anyway, I'm going to stop the video short here and uh, get to work on that.